What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers. Vince McMahon, vibe on the spot. Should be an interesting one. You know, Vince, he has no qualms with firing people. And especially if he gets to spy you right on the spot after you did something he didn't like. Oh, I'm pretty sure he's gonna enjoy it. So we're gonna check out some of those moments where Vince was just able to, you know, pull out his his infamous word. Well, infamous words. You're fired. Oh, yeah. You know Vince got a kick out of saying that shit. Let's get right into this. Of a cult oh, and no. was yelling, You're fired on an almost weekly basis. The chairman's catchphrase got seriously over as Vince handed out kayfabe pink slips with an evil glee. Unfortunately, though, it wasn't just on screen that no, he did it this. Wasn't. McMahon has fired many, many people in his life, and he let the following 10 performers go without a moment's hesitation. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 WWE wrestlers Vince McMahon fired on the spot. Join us. Number 10, Serena Deeb. Oh. Before she was a champion in the NWA or the professor in AEW, Serena Deeb was a member of a cult. Serena, yeah. no last name, was part of CM Punk's Straight Edge Society in 2010. Alongside Luke Gallows and Joey Mercury, she was converted by Punk to follow in his no drinking, no drug taking ways as the group attempted to assert their dominance on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Emphasis on the word attempted there. Much like the group itself, Serena's potential was squandered during this storyline and her her underwhelming firing from WWE reflected that. She was let go from her contract after being spotted out drinking and partying with her friends, oh, which was not in line with her character's no. straight edge values. Um, guys, you do realize wrestling isn't real, right? What did you expect Edge and Christian to drink blood? I get why they did. I, it it kind of sucks, but I wouldn't have fired her for sure, but it does suck because that's part of your storyline. So, if anything, you kind of have to keep that up until the gimmick is up. So, if someone sees this and wrote, well, nah, I can just, wait, I got a picture of you drinking right here. Unless they would have went with a storyline angle of it, but damn, fire her, though? That's wild. Love whilst they that. were in the brood. Or Duke Grossi to actually collect people's garbage. Anyway, Deeb was released and the entire stable collapsed quickly thereafter. And all because she had the nerve to enjoy herself when she was off the clock. How dare she? Number yeah, 9, Dawn Marie. Getting her start managing Lance Storm in ECW, Dawn Marie is probably best known to wrestling fans as the woman who bonked Al Wilson to death in 2003. <laughs> you probably remember it because A, it's hilarious, and B, that feud with Tori dragged on for ages. Dawn was fired from WWE in 2005, shortly after reuniting with Storm to manage him at ECW One Night Stand. So why was she let go? Did she hit somebody with a flaming barbed wire bat? Did she impact Hail another wrestler on a bed of nails. Did she rip someone's head clean off? No, nope, she got pregnant. Almost oh. instantly after learning that Dawn Marie was with child, WWE cut bait. I'm sure you can put yourself into the twisted mind of Vince McMahon to understand why he thought a pregnant Dawn would be useless to his business, but we wouldn't recommend doing that if you ever want to look yourself in the mirror again. Damn. As you can imagine, this caused Dawn unimaginable stress and she ended up taking the company to court over it. The two parties reached a settlement in uh -huh. 2007 and Dawn Marie happening. has been persona non grata ever since. Number eight, Finley. We all know that Finley. I can fin definitely see that. No, like, damn, you fired me because I got pregnant. Like, all right, bro. We'll take your ass to court and they settled. <laughs> Finley loves to fight, but did you know he also loves to get in massive trouble backstage over incidents <laughs> at house shows? Well, oh, now you no. do. After retiring from the ring, the Belfast brawler took up a job as an agent. This gave him more say in what happened in front of a crowd, but also meant increased responsibility if things went wrong. At a 2011 live event, Finley greenlit a segment in which The Miz would interrupt the US national anthem. He thought this was a good idea, as Miz was WWE champion at the time and needed some heat heading into his WrestleMania 27 main event. However, he forgot the golden rule of America, yeah. never mess with anything even remotely patriotic. Yeah. People got very upset, including several members of the National Guard who were in attendance uh -huh. that night. Finley was blamed for the faux pas and was fired shortly thereafter. Damn. He was eventually rehired by WWE, but only after he learned the entire Pledge of Allegiance backwards and got a tattoo of George Washington on his left <laughs> butt. Cheek. God bless America. Number seven, Emma. They Before probably had to play face to get him out of here because, you know, they, we let him go and then they just let him come back in 
at a later date. That's really probably what happened. But Neil Dashwood must hold the record for the quickest firing and rehiring in WWE history, which all stemmed from a simple misunderstanding that took place in 2014. Whilst doing some shopping at Walmart, Emma was using a self-service checkout when she accidentally forgot to scan an iPad case worth just over $20. This led to the Australian getting arrested and having to appear at a local community court the following day. Believing that one of their independent contractors was a shoplifter, WWE oh, decided wow. that this was bad publicity and released Emma from her contract. Over a $20 Damn. iPad case. Are you serious? Naturally, this decision got the internet very riled up, which yeah. doesn't take much, to be fair. After a few hours of being bombarded online, the company relented and Emma was reinstated. <laughs> For her simple, honest mistake, the wrestler had to attend an online course, do a day's community service, and almost lost her job. Well, actually, I guess she... That's kind of wild, bro. Like, it wouldn't even... I, I, man, I'll go back and pay it. Like, damn, bro. I wouldn't, like, I... Trying to steal an iPad case, I make I make some decent money. I can go back and pay it. Damn, that's wild. Did for a bit. Should have just distracted the police by dancing and then made a run for it. Number six, Brad Maddox. Former Raw General Manager Brad Maddox had one of the most infamous debuts in WWE mm -hmm. history, as well as one of the most infamous firings. His first <laughs> major appearance was as the crooked referee for CM Punk and Ryback's Hell in a Cell match at the 2012 pay per view. He then proceeded to get the tar kicked out of him by more famous wrestlers before moving into a mostly non-wrestling role on TV. Maddox continued to perform in dark matches though, including one for the November 24th, 2015 edition of Main Event. Ahead of battling our truth Brad cut a promo on the crowd in which he called them cocky pricks. As a result of this spicy language, Brad was sent packing from WWE Damn. never to return. He wrestled one match on the indies in 2016 and hasn't come back to the ring since. Damn, that's that's what did it? Damn, really? Saying cocky pricks? I guess because of the word cocky, I guess? Pause? I don't know. Damn, that's... That's very interesting. <laughs> what he said was a bit stronger than the company's normal output, granted, but it's not like Maddox was cursing up a storm yeah. on TV or anything. To make things worse, Vince McMahon then went on Raw a few months later and said that he was going to give Shane an effing beating. Yeah. Did he get fired? Like no. <laughs> no, because it's fucking... It's Vince. <laughs> like bollocks, did he? Number five, Gangrel. Despite being extremely popular in the Attitude Era and having some absolutely banging theme music, Gangrel never won a single championship during his time with WWE. Which is crazy when you think about title it. title for like five minutes. This hasn't got anything to do with what we're talking about. I just think it's weird. Now, where was I? After the brood came to an end in 1999, Gangrel lost direction and floated around the mid-card until 2001. The vampire also hurt his leg, which caused him to gain weight. During a match, where his shirt got ripped off, Vince oh. McMahon was apparently disgusted by Gangrel's Whoa. physique. And this is allegedly what led to him getting let go from the company. McMahon's preference for large muscular men is Damn. famous, but it's not like everyone who walked yeah. through his door <laughs> was an Adonis. I mean, he made Yokozuna WWE Champion twice, for goodness sake. Yeah, Despite this is true. his acrimonious firing, Gangrel did return to WWE in 2004 as one of JBL's henchmen. Presumably, this was after a promise to Vince that he would only drink diet plasma for from now on. <laughs> Number four, Nails. Let me tell you about one of the few men to ever dare put his hands on Vince McMahon outside of a wrestling ring. Oh. Nails debuted for WWE in 1992, playing an ex-convict who alleged that he had been abused by the big boss man whilst in jail. Despite by at this point in his career having the athleticism of a tree that had been recently <laughs> struck by lightning, the giant man was pushed relatively strongly, getting featured matches at SummerSlam and Survivor Series. This all changed in December when Nails confronted McMahon over a financial dispute. Bret Hart spoke about this night in his book, claiming that he could hear clashes from down the hall as the behemoth choked McMahon in his own office. Oh, as well shit. as a series of lawsuits between the two parties, this led to Nails being shown the door. Yeah. I mean, of course it did. He literally attacked his boss. <laughs> hey, maybe Damn. if he'd driven a truck to Vince's office and sprayed him with beer instead, he'd have been all right. Number three. Yo, my man said, I don't give a fuck who you are, Vince. You about to catch these hands. <laughs> and you'll Brian. Oh. Do I have to talk about the next? Uh, yeah, I, I I I know about this incident, the uh, the good old choking of of the referee with the tie. <laughs> you know that every time I do, I start crying and come out in that weird rash. 
Oh, fine. Wade Barrett and the rest of the rookies from the first season of NXT made their presence known on the main roster during the June 7th, 2010 edition of Raw. All eight men lay waste to the ring, attacking wrestlers, commentators, and even <laughs> ring announcer Justin Roberts. Not the dapper yapper. It was this assault that ended up costing one Nexus member uh -huh. his job. Daniel Bryan choked Roberts out <laughs> with his own tie, which was considered too violent for WWE's PG products. Uh -huh. Claiming that they had sponsors to answer to, WWE instantly let Bryan go. Of course, it all worked out fine in the end as D-Bry was brought back in time to join John Cena's team to face the Nexus at SummerSlam. To be honest, leaving the group was probably one of the best things that ever happened yeah, to them professionally cool. as the once promising act quit Quickly crashed and burned after a string of maddening booking decisions. It actually kind of worked now out in his favor. E45 cream. I feel the tears coming on. Number two, the Ultimate Warrior. SummerSlam 1991 hosted two huge spectacles. One was the match made in heaven, the on-screen wedding of Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth. Let's just brush over the fact that they would get divorced in real life the next year, shall we? Yeah. The other was the match made in hell, a three-on-two handicap match pitting a pair of American heroes against some dastardly foreign heels. Sergeant Slaughter, General Adnan, and Colonel Mustafa were set to square off against WWE Champion Hulk Hogan and former champ The Ultimate Warrior. Fans were thrilled to see the two good guys win, not knowing that one of them was about to get cut. Warrior had allegedly threatened to no-show if he was not oh, paid a large yeah, sum of money for appearing at WrestleMania 7. I think I Vince coughed up, but then gave Warrior his marching orders immediately after the match was done. Yeah, I think I did see a video talking about this. So, uh, yeah, bro. I'm not going to no-show, so pay me some money. All right, you paid him. Then afterwards, all right, you're fucking fired. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> a large sum of money for appearing at WrestleMania 7. Vince coughed up, but then gave Warrior his marching orders immediately after the match was done. This is one of those stories in wrestling where nobody really knows the complete truth. There yeah. are multiple accounts of who asked for what, but the end result was the same. Warrior was gone. Mm -hmm. Well, for about eight months at least. There was no way WWE were going to miss out on that sweet, sweet wrestling buddy money. Number yeah. one, Jeff Jarrett. He might have let people go for accidentally stealing iPad cases and being out of shape, but at least Vince McMahon never fired anyone for real on live TV. Until now. March 26, <laughs> 2001 was a historic night for pro wrestling. Now owned by McMahon, WCW was broadcasting the final episode of Nitro as part of a simulcast with WWE's Raw. This meant that Vinnie Mac cropped up numerous times across both shows and he had some very choice words for the chosen one, Jeff Jarrett. Uh. After watching him backstage on a monitor, McMahon stated that Jarrett's contract wasn't going to be picked up as part of the buyout. Or, in his words, he was capital G, double O, double N, double E, gone. <laughs> Many have speculated that this rough exit was down to Jarrett allegedly holding Vince up uh -huh. for money in 1999, but whatever the reason, this was absolutely brutal. Of course, the funny thing about it was that Vince couldn't actually fire Double J since he had a guaranteed contract with AOL Time Warner. Fortunately, years later, Jarrett did manage to mend fences and return to WWE, which included a Hall of Fame induction in 2018. Fire that, slap nuts. <laughs> That's, man, hey, Vince, Vince is a, he's, he's a company guy. He's going to do what the, uh, what's, what he feels best is for the investors. The whole Emma thing, that one's kind of wild. Didn't even know that was a, a situation. She really got fired over a misunderstanding over a $20 iPad case and then ended up getting rehired because fans was like, yo, what are you doing, Vince? Like, it's it wasn't even that big of a deal. That's kind of wild, man. But, hey, once again, he's a company guy. He's all about the bottom dollar, all about him pleasing investors. So he's going to do what he can to make sure the investors are okay and, you know, there's no issues. And if he has to fire somebody, he'll definitely fire somebody, man. So... Hey, man, this was a great video. I enjoyed this. Uh, comment down below. Let me know what's a infamous you are fired scene from uh, Vince McMahon. Uh, we've seen them plenty of times. You know, a lot of them obviously storyline based, not real. But at the same time, 
<laughs> with the Jeff Jarrett situation, that actually he was trying to fire him, but he actually couldn't. So, but still, comment down below. Let me know your favorite. You're fired. <laughs> your favorite. You're fired scene from Vince. I think the one that always gets me, I think, is when he fucking put Eric Bischoff in a damn trash compactor <laughs> live on Raw. I was like. Damn, bro, this nigga really threw him away in, in a real trash compactor live on television. Shit was wild, man. <laughs> but I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel Road to 150K, and I'm still young, speeding YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.